Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. So today I'll be talking about vintage dusting powders that you could still buy today. And I'm gonna go into a brief history of dusting powders. Okay. So I recently picked up a huge lot of vintage dusting powders on eBay, and then I became really fascinated with them because they're not as common today as they were in the past. In the past, it was really common for most women to use perfume dusting powders in their beauty routine. And I was really curious as to how old dusting powders were and kind of when they started. And I was really curious to when dusting powders became popular in history and kind of wanted to know more about them. So I did a little research and here's what I came up with. Hygiene and cosmetic products proliferated in conjunction with a more general push for greater sanitation within American life. As access to soap and clean water and thus convenient bathing became more common, the American public began to place more importance on keeping their bodies smelling clean. Both men and women were increasingly working in crowded offices and factories and people were spending more time together socially. This focused attention on social perceptions of cleanliness. Previously, people had covered up body odors through the use of perfumes rather than attempting to stop those odors. But by the late 1800s, perspiration, sour breath, and other body odors were increasingly perceived as socially unacceptable, as marks of poor hygiene, and as issues to be solved through the use of products. Before the 20th century, talcum powder made of the mineral talc was the main personal care product advertised to alleviate odorous feet, armpits, and general body perspiration. So before the 20th century, talcum powder was the main way to stop and block body odor. Talcum powder was sold as a general body freshener and deodorant, as it absorbed perspiration and moisture from the skin and clothes. Talcum powder could be purchased in unscented forms, but also in countless perfumed varieties. The powder was also used in much the same way that it is today to prevent diaper rash, prickly heat, and chafing. Although talcum powders were often marketed for general family use, advertisers often specifically targeted women whom they implied were most at risk for offensive body odors. Ads warned women that they must live up to a dainty feminine ideal. Although advertisers insisted that a general sweetness was expected to attend the female body, this expectation did not extend to men. Talcum advertisers did assert that their products would help men feel and look fresher, but they stopped short of claiming that men should be without body odor, and a state which was perceived as feminine. So, it seems like talcum powder was definitely a use for feminine hygiene and dusting. And then it kind of became a glamorous thing where you kind of dust your body after you got out of the shower or when you were doing your makeup. But it seems nowadays you can still buy dusting powder, but it's not as common as it used to be. I think once deodorant became more popular and common, especially the stick deodorant, that's when kind of perfumed talcum powder wasn't as fashionable as it was in the past. So one of the talcum powders that you can still buy today is Youth Do a Dusting Powder. So Youth Do has been around since 1953 and initially started as a bath oil. And it's a very kind of strong, unique fragrance. Um, it's not for everyone. I feel like maybe it grows on you. I want to like it, trust me. And I love the blue and gold color of the vintage Youth Do Dusting Powder. And you can still buy this one today, but I believe now it's in a square one. Unless I'm wrong, that's what I saw online. But I really like this round shape of the Youth Do one. But I'm not a huge fan of Youth Dew, to be honest. Another dusting powder is an Elizabeth Arden one, and this is a bluegrass. The one I have here is a vintage one, but I believe you can still get bluegrass dusting powder. And bluegrass has been around since 1934. And it was invented as a scent to capture the smell of grassy pasture fields that Arden bred her famous thoroughbreds. This is a really classic scent from the 1930s, and you can still buy the dusting powder today. And another dusting powder you can still buy today is White Shoulders. And this one is a classic fragrance that has been around for a long time. It's a soft, floral, powdery fragrance that's very romantic and kind of French. And it was launched in the 1940s. The dates vary. A lot of people say around 1943. And it's a really nice floral fragrance. It has jasmine lily of the valley, gardenia, and it also has oak mosque and musk. 
and it's a really nice floral fragrance that's been around since the 1940s. So this is a classic dusting powder that you can still buy today. And again, I love the pink and gold combination. And another vintage dusting powder that you can still buy today is Woods of Windsor. And this one has been around since 1770, so it's a really old brand. And the one I have is a True Rose Dusting Powder. And this one is made in England from an 18th century apothecary situated in Windsor Castle. And I'm really excited to try this one because I love roses. And it has a really pretty castle on the box. Another vintage one is White Diamonds by Elizabeth Taylor. And this one has been around since the 90s and there's a really nice fragrance. I have the perfume as well and I really enjoy it. So I'm excited about this dusting powder. White Diamonds has become one of my favorite perfumes and I love Elizabeth Taylor. Another vintage dusting powder you can still buy today is Yardley, except now the Yardley ones are in like a kind of a bottle, like a tin bottle where you kind of like shake it on and it doesn't come with the poof. But I have this vintage Yardley dusting powder, but you can still buy it today in different fragrances. I think they have rose and lavender. And Yardley's are very old as well. It's the same age as Woods of Windsor and it's been around since 1770. And they started with soap as well as other toiletry products including cosmetics and fragrances. And another vintage dusting powder that you can still buy today is Taboo. You can still buy the perfume as well as the dusting powder and Taboo has been around since the 1930s and it's a really nice kind of smoky fragrance. So I'm going to have a look at some of my vintage dusting powders and show you them. So the first one is called Tussie Enchante and I really like the purple container. There's nothing in this one but I think the box is really pretty. And it's Tussie Cosmetics, so I believe this a company isn't even around anymore. And the next one is this beautiful pink and purple container, and this is vintage dead stock, so even the poof is completely sealed and it has never been used. But I just love the packaging. And this is Violet Dusting Powder. Again, this is another really old one. It's by Richard Hudnut, um, the same one as the other brand, but it looks even older. It's in like nice a metal tin container and there's nothing in this one as well, but I really like the container. And here we have a spicy apple blossom body powder. And this one is a spicy apple blossom dusting body powder. And it's Lander Distributor from Fifth Avenue, New York. So it doesn't really have anything else in it, but I like the pretty flowers. It looks like it's from the 1950s. And I have a Pond's Dream Flower dusting powder. I really like this one. I believe this one's from the 1960s. I like the pink container and like the clear top. This one hasn't been used either, but I just love the giant pink poof that it comes with. I still wish they still made the Pond's ones in this container. And then I have this other one. This one doesn't have a real name brand on it, but it's a lavender chamomile dusting powder. Um, I like this one because it's made with cornstarch instead of talc, which is kind of nice. And then there's Love's Baby Soft dusting powder. I know you can still buy Love's Baby Soft perfume, but this is the dusting powder, and I really like the pretty container. I think it's really cute. This one's been opened, so it's been used, but I really like the vintage container of this one. This one's really interesting. The front cover on it is pretty intense with the lady figure. I thought this, and this one is a Sierra perfume dusting powder by Charles Revson. So this one looks pretty old. I really like the top part and yeah, it looks like it's kind of glittery as well. So I thought that one was interesting. And then I have this metal tin one. This looks really old. It's called Tweed and the outside kind of has a tweed print to it. And this is bath powder and there's no date or anything. So I really don't know, but for some reason this one looks really old, maybe even from, I don't know the 1930s or 40s based on the font and here's another one it's called Yankee Clover and it's by the Richard Hudnut so it looks like he made a lot of dusting powders back in the day and this one looks really old for some reason it's screaming in 1940s here's another one this one looks very old because this is old tin and this is lavender bath powder I really don't know it's hard to say but it it kind of looks 
Art Nouveau-ish to me, or like, I don't know, could be even from the 1930s? It's really hard to say, but it definitely looks quite old. And this is another one. This is a metal kind of chrome, and this one's called Toilet Powder, and it's called Jasmine of Southern France Toilet Powder. It says Lori Perfumers Boston, made in the USA. So this one's interesting too. I've never seen this kind of metal chrome top and a dusting powder before. And lastly is this other Risley dusting powder and it's a refreshing deodorant bath powder. And it's called Superb Deodorant Bath Powder. A downy soft dusting powder, delicate texture for use after the bath. Its effective de deodorant qualities bring lasting daintiness. And this one kind of looks like it's from the 1950s as well. That is it for my vintage dusting powder collection. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you tried dusting powder before? Do you have a favorite if you do use them or did you use them in the past? I'm really curious to know if anyone else uses dusting powder. I think I'm going to start using the Elizabeth Taylor one, white diamonds, and kind of dust my chest maybe when I get out of the shower. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!